There is a theory that was proposed by uh, British scientist Gordon Kennedy in 1953. It is called the lipostatic hypothesis, and it's the idea that the brain monitors the amount of body fat and acts to defend this energy store against uh, changes or perturbation. So um, this equilibrium or homeostasis that has been achieved, it wants to maintain it at all costs. So we will write down his name in 1953, Gordon Kennedy. Now, the connection between body fat and feeding behavior suggests that there must be some sort of communication from adipose tissue to the brain, letting them know how much fat stores we have, how much we need, so that kind of gives us the motivation to eat. So there was a blood-borne hormonal signal that was immediately suspected, and this was confirmed in the 1960s by Douglas Coleman. So 1960. Douglas Coleman. And what they detected, Coleman, what they detected was a, uh, the DNA from one strain of an obese mouse lacked both copies of this gene that was called the OB gene. OB gene. So these mice would be OB, OB. They lacked both copies of it. So that means that they were really obese and they thought that maybe this gene that the OB gene coded for a protein. So they thought that this coded for a protein that would tell the brain that fat reserves or are normal. So when you eat, this protein would be transcribed and it would tell the brain, tell the brain that fat stores are normal. So when these mice lack this protein, they would constantly think that their fat stores are depleted. So they would eat until they are obese. So they would eat and eat and eat and eat, and they wouldn't have any regulatory protein or gene coding or telling them to, um, telling them to stop eating. So they did an experiment with some mice. So let me do a little terrible drawing of a mouse. And let's say that this is a fat mouse. And then this is a normal mouse. Okay, so this one lacks OB. And this one has OB. So you can actually surgically uh, fuse these two mice together. So you would have a fat mouse that is fused with a skinny mouse. So their blood supplies are the same. So they, are, they have the circulation of the blood going to both genes, or sorry, both mice, so that this one that has the OB protein would then be secreted into this mouse as well. So this mouse eventually would lose weight because this protein that's being coded is telling it that its fat stores are normal, so it's stopping, uh, it's, it's not eating anymore. So they started searching for this protein that was called the OB gene. And in 19, um, hold on a second, 1994, a group of scientists that was led by Jeffrey Friedman at Rockefeller University isolated the protein and they called it leptin. Now I'm sure you have heard of leptin. It is essentially the protein that tells our body that we should stop eating. So that's why sometimes if you're eating and you don't really feel full and you still feel like you're hungry, but then 15 minutes after you're eating, you feel way more full than you did when you were eating. That's because this protein takes some time to be able to encode, right? It takes a little bit of time. And so yeah, this protein, um, when you treat this mouse, so instead of fusing a mouse to, uh, with another mouse, if we go up here, we have this fat mouse again, and you treat it, you give it some leptin, and you inject the leptin into it, and it will end up losing weight and stopping eating as much as it was because this protein is regulating its eating habits.